In this tutorial, I'm going to give you a very basic introduction to FaceFX Studio Professional 2013. Now, I could download the no-save evaluation from our website, but I actually want to show off the FaceFX License Manager, which is how you get licensed with FaceFX Studio Professional. I already have the license installed on this computer, but if I click on it and return the license, anybody in my license pool could access this license on a different computer. I can even have the license automatically returned to me after a period of time. So we make it very easy uh, to share licenses of FaceFX Studio Professional. Once I've got the license checked out, uh, I no longer need an internet connection, and I can launch FaceFX Studio Professional. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, a character um, set up in FaceFX Studio Professional, and I'm going to analyze audio with it. Um, and I'm going to use a sample character that's in the installation folder of FaceFX, uh, Slade. Now Slate is an FBX file that has an animation defined that defines the targets that we're going to animate inside of FaceFX. Um, so this, it asks, once I drag the FBX file onto FaceFX Studio, it's going to ask me for this batch export text file. Now the batch export text file tells me the frame numbers and the target names that are defined in that FBX file. So Slate has an animation in that, and on frame 10, the open target is defined. And it's defined relative to what's on frame 0. So frame 0 has the neutral pose, or the rest pose, or the T pose, and then I move the jaw on frame 10 so that he opens his mouth. And I do that for all of the uh, poses defined in that batch export text file. Now if you're creating your character, just set up the character with the, and key the morph targets or bone poses on those frames that are defined in the batch export text file. Then you can use the same batch export text file that we're using on Slade and get access to the same performance uh, that we're getting here. And so it's brought my character into FaceFX Studio, and it's grabbed all of these uh, poses on these various frames. Slade's a, Slade is a uh, bones-based character. You can see the bone names here uh, and his mesh. Um, uh, but I can also drive morphs in FaceFX Studio very easily. Now if I select all the targets and go to Auto Workspace, I can drive each of the targets and make sure it looks okay and it's, been, it's brought in correctly. Not only do I want to make sure that the mouth is opening correctly for the open pose here, I want to make sure that the head's not rotating, or the eyes aren't blinking, or there's some other uh, unwanted bone animation that's going to cause an artifact in my animations. Now once I've defined these six uh, bone poses f uh, for, uh, for the speech targets, my character's ready to, uh, to lip sync. But Slade also has um, a setup that you know, lets him blink and squint and uh, raise his eyebrows. These curves are created automatically from audio files in face effects. And so as long as he has targets to drive, um, you know, Slade will animate this way. And these are 2D sliders uh, that are created uh, automatically when I drag this FBX file on. So I can rotate the head around and rotate the eyes around on Slade very easily. Uh, and so now let's drag an audio file on and see what happens. Uh, so in the FaceFX installation folder, there's uh, samples directory, audio, and I'm going to drag the welcome.oga file on, and it's going to grab that welcome.txt file automatically because that's the same name with the .txt extension. I want to have text that accurately matches what was spoken in the audio file. And we support uh, AUG, WAVE, 16 kilohertz, 16 bit, um, everything but MP3. All right, so now I've got an animation, and I can tell because a bunch of animation curves were created. You can see the curves here. Um, now, if I scrub through the animation timeline, you can see my sliders animating, my character is lip syncing, and I hear the audio. And you're probably thinking, wow, that was very easy, but I don't really understand what's going on just yet. So I'm going to try to give you a, a better understanding of what's happening here. When I drag the audio file on, FaceFX is going to split the audio up into the phoneme times and word times. Uh, it really helps to have accurate text here, but you don't need it. You can just use audio if you need to. Now, when it sees a phoneme, it knows which targets, what curve to create because of what's in the mapping tab. Now, in general, you don't want to mess with the mapping tab if you just, you just want to create these default targets. But if you want to define your own target set, you can. Um, so when it sees the P phoneme, it's going to drive the PBM curve uh, to 0.9. Here's the PBM curve, and whenever it sees a P phoneme, it's going to drive um, that curve. And I can actually drag the, uh, the phoneme tab down and then select the curve tab, and now I can see them both simultaneously. Now if I select all of the speech curves, and I, you see me, if I move a phoneme time, you can see the speech curves updating automatically. So if there are any mistakes, you can fix them automatically uh, in, the, in the phoneme tab. But in general, we'll do a very good job of analyzing the audio correctly if you provide us with accurate text. Now for the speech gesture curves, 
uh, like blinks and eyebrow raises and squints, um, these are created automatically from an analysis actor, and you can generate a new take on the analysis actor to get a different interpretation uh, of that animation. Um, and so all of these curves, you'll see, they don't have keys that I can select uh, because they're all owned by analysis. They're either being driven by the phoneme times or from the analysis actor. If I want to modify keys directly, I need to select the curves and select and uncheck the own by analysis checkbox here. Now you see I've got the keys uh, exposed and I can move the keys, change the derivatives, delete the keys, and so forth. But then when I move a phoneme, the, the curves no longer update. So in general, you want to keep curves owned by analysis as long as possible um, before you do any tweaks. Now once, um, once I've got these curves defined, how are they driving the targets? Well, that's where the face graph comes in. A curve called open is going to drive the node called open in the face graph. So here's the open node in the face graph, and as I scrub through the animation, the node is going to get updated by whatever the curve value is. Uh, you can look at the face graph that was created. In general, it's just the bone poses that we uh, defined, and then there's also a couple links, uh, link functions here for the two-dimensional, uh, you know, like the head pitch node is going to drive uh, the positive um, when you slide it to the right, and it's going to drive the negative rotation node when you slide it to the left. I can set up more complicated setups, uh, like let's say if I have a smile target, um, I can do create a smile node, and it can drive uh, some other bone pose. Um, let's say whenever, so whenever I have the, uh, I ramp up the smile node, it's going to cause the character to squint. Um, if I change the link function here, I can change it from let's say a positive relationship to a corrective link. Now, whenever smile goes up, it will drive the squint. Uh, it will. Uh, drive the squint target down if they're both active. And that's useful if targets conflict with each other. Like let's say a smile node and the PBM. Now whenever PBM uh, needs to have the lips completely shut to make that PBM sound. So whenever that's active, we might actually want to drive the smile node uh, to zero with the corrective link. So that's the, uh, the face graph tab, which is kind of the brains of the operation. Um, we've gone through the phoneme tab, the curve tab. Uh, there's the events tab. Uh, which briefly I'll say is just events or sub animations. Um, so this is the phrase events group period animation. Uh, if I want to, it's not defined here, which is why it's grayed out. If I double click on it, I can create it, add curves to this animation, and then those curves will be added to the uh, uh, to my parent animation automatically. So basically, uh, these are uh, events that we create automatically from the text file. Uh, the phrase events. Every time I see a period or a comma or a question mark. I'm going to create an event with the appropriate duration and the appropriate start time uh, for, that, uh, for that phrase. And so let's say I can raise the eyebrows every time there's a question or do something like that. Uh, so that's the events tab. Um, we've talked about the mapping. And then the console tab is just uh, everything that FaceFX Studio does, uh, it issues a command for. Um, so I can take, uh, um, you know, I can take any of these commands uh, and copy it and paste it down here. Uh, in the command line, uh, and it's going to execute that command. Um, and in the Python tab, I can add logic. Um, I can also issue face effects commands with the issue command. And so that's going to issue that face effects command that's in there. So I can have complex loops that are issuing commands and setting up my actor or something. So that's uh, basically face effects in a nutshell. Um, you know, creating a character. Um, you know, when you're setting up your targets, you can use the website uh, as an example. We've got uh, um, we've got all the poses that you want for our default setup to find here. Um, you know, drag on audio to create the animation, and then export the animation out to FBX um, or or some other uh, uh, some other format. Uh, thanks for watching this tutorial, and uh, um, good luck with face effects.